Welcome to Proverbs for Life Today, a ministry of ChristAssembly.org. My name is Bert Allen. Today we come to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29. It's a nice time when we can sit down together and read a scripture together, learn what God's trying to reveal to us about His ways and about the ways of wisdom. You know, we really will never have wisdom in our life from God until the day that we are born again. And we're born again by faith in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for me and for you. He paid for our sins with his blood. If you want to know more about how you can have forgiveness from God today, stick around to the end of the video. I'll be standing in front of a bricks background, and you can hear from the word of God how you can have eternal life by faith. But for now, let's dive into chapter 1, verse 29 of the book of Proverbs. So he starts out with this word because, and he's telling us that because people have neglected wisdom, because they rejected the outstretched hand of wisdom, because they neglected wisdom, and then finally calamity came with their dread and anguish, and the people go, oh, now we'll call for wisdom. But God said, wisdom will not answer. You've waited too long. You're in too deep. But now he's going to relate wisdom to the word knowledge. And you must understand they're not the same thing. So knowledge helps us know things. Wisdom helps us apply our knowledge and know the will of God. So you can know a lot of stuff, but unless you have wisdom, you won't know how to please God and make great decisions. So what were the people like? They hated knowledge. And you got to stop and think about that. A lot of people today hate knowledge too. They don't want to learn anything new. I have friends that just hate all technology. And they're young people and old people. Some of them don't even have a cell phone that they really like. Most of them use a cell phone, but they just use it for phone calls, maybe a text now and then, but overall, not so much. I know older folks that grew up without cell phones, and they're not so wild about the technology either. But that's just one example about knowledge. You can know stuff. But just because you know how to use the different features of a cell phone doesn't mean you use it right. You might use it to surf the net and do all kind of stuff you really know you ought not to be doing. You might be using it to send messages to people you know you ought not to be sending. Knowledge by itself, you know, that's something you need to know for, from God. You need to get to know God. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, Jesus said. So if you want to know God the Father, you've got to come through Jesus Christ by faith. But that's cool because Jesus said, I want you to come. He invites everybody to come to him. And then he will reveal the Father to you. But they hated knowledge. They said, I don't want to know. I don't want to know God. I pretend that God really doesn't exist. Or if he does exist, he's cool with all the stuff I want to do. So you can think you can be your own God and do whatever you want. But God says, no, nah, that's not going to work out. There's a day coming where he'll judge all men through Jesus Christ. Well, Okay, so ask yourself today, have I been acting like I hate the knowledge of God that comes through Jesus? You know what the answer is. You know where you're at with Jesus. Either you got that with faith or you got that with hating knowledge. One way or the other, either you're with Jesus by faith or you're hating knowledge and hate Jesus. But he'll open up knowledge to you. Well, now we're gonna look at a choice. They did not choose. You know, when people have calamity come into their life of different types, well, that calamity comes in some cases because you hated the wisdom of God. You hated the knowledge of God. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But if you don't have any fear of Yahweh, and I'm going to just say L-O-R-D is always going to be pronounced Yahweh. 
because the folks who translated the New American Standard Bible said, we'll use the cap L-O-R-D, but I think it's far better to use the real name of God in the Hebrew text, which is Yahweh. So I want to go to this idea of choosing. Did you choose the fear? Did you choose this fear of Yahweh? Did you choose or not? Did you choose? Did you make a conscious decision down here that you aren't going to go with the fear of the Lord, the fear of Yahweh? You see, people make that kind of choice all the time. And you can make a good choice today and say, I really want to know Jesus as Savior. I'm tired of my life. I've had it with calamity. I have tried it my way. I thought I knew everything, and I found out I really don't know God. I really don't know God. But today's the day you can know God. You can know Jesus. He's God. You can know God the Father. He's God. And you can know the Holy Spirit. They'll come into your life, change everything. He's God too. Three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God. They're absolutely united together, but they're three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I often illustrate that by thinking about Jesus getting baptized in the Jordan River. Jesus is standing as God in the Jordan River clothed in flesh. The Holy Spirit, like a dove, comes down and lands on him. So I've got the sun standing in the river, the dove coming out of heaven and landing on Jesus, Holy Spirit. And number three, this voice comes from heaven and said, that's my boy, that's my son. And we know then that that's the father talking about Jesus. And he said, we should listen to Jesus because he's the father's son and the father's pleased with him. Well, that's cool. So back to ours, let's summarize where we've been. If we want a much better life that starts today and pleases God, you gotta go back and ask yourself, are you doing this hate thing? Are you hating any knowledge of God and running away from God? Because you know your deeds are evil, and if you come to the light of Jesus, your deeds will be exposed? Well, that's exactly what needs to happen. We come to the light of Jesus, confess that we're sinners, and we need a Savior, and we stop hating knowledge. You know, when you hate knowledge, you're just going to head down the wrong road. So there's the first part. I'm going to put a one right here. But it's related to number two right down here that these people that are in such deep trouble, and maybe you're there today, you did not choose. You can make a choice today and choose the fear of Jesus Christ and know him and love him because he loves you. Jesus loves you today and says, choose the fear of Yahweh. Fear God, and that'll be the beginning of wisdom. That'll be the beginning of knowledge in your life. Praise God for his willingness to let us choose him. So let's pray. Father, we thank you that you offer this choice about Jesus. I'd pray that many people today would receive that free gift of eternal life from you today, that they would put their faith in Jesus, not only for salvation, but to solve every calamity that comes our way. Lord, we know not all calamity comes from sin, but sin certainly brings a lot of calamity. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. We pray your blessing upon our time. May we remember your word and heed your word today. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. May we love Jesus more. Before I close the video, I'd like to share with you four verses about eternal life. I often ask people this simple question. Why should Jesus let you into heaven? And the answer to that question surprises many people because it comes from the Bible and it's simple and it's clear. Most folks, when they hear that question, they tell me, well, I've been good or tried to do more good than bad or I tried hard or I've done a lot of nice things and I hope God will let me into heaven. They somehow think if their good works outweigh their bad works that God will let them in. But God says, actually, I'll let people into heaven because of a free gift. But the story from Jesus starts with four verses, and I'm going to read them one at a time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
Romans 3.23. You see, for every person who lives today on earth in human flesh, we've all sinned, every one of us. We've all told a lie. We've all done or said something that made somebody else angry, and we were doing it out of anger ourselves. We've all done things to hurt other people at one time or another. God says that's all sin, and I look upon that as falling short of my glory, God says. God says we should never fall short of his standard, which is the glory of God. Well, is it serious that we've sinned? Should I be worried about that? Everybody sinned. Why should I worry? Well, consider Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death that all of us deserve the death penalty. At the moment we sin, we incurred the death penalty for the smallest sin or the biggest sin. I'm happy that Romans 3, 20, 6, 23 continues and says, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if you've been listening carefully and thinking about what the Bible says, so far we've learned that we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all deserve the death penalty. This doesn't sound like good news until you read the last part of that last verse. It says that God has a free gift for all of us. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord and it's eternal life. The free gift of eternal life that only Jesus Christ can give you. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. Why would God offer us this great gift if we're all sinners? Well, Romans 5, 8 tells us, it says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. God loves sinners like you and like me. He died in my place and in your place. He paid the death penalty for me. I often illustrate the free gift like this that I have this old Nissan truck. It has 285,000 miles on it. It's not that great a truck. It sits at the beach every day. But I illustrate the point this way. I hold up the keys to my truck and I say, I'm going to make you a symbolic gift of my truck. But until you take the keys out of my hand, it's not your truck yet. Well, let me tell you what I mean. A lot of people have been going to church for years. They know all about Jesus. They can quote verses about Jesus. But they know in their heart that they're not quite right with God. And there's never been a day in their life where they've been born again and they know it. You see, they're just staring at the keys in God's hand and he's offering you the free gift today of saying, reach out by faith and receive that free gift and take it into your heart today. Receive the free gift. Okay, how do we do that? Well, Romans 10.9 tells us how to do that. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he means saved from the death penalty, eternal destruction. So we can receive that free gift right now by faith, and we can pray a prayer together. I urge you to pray with me. I'm going to pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I confess that I am a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. I confess too that I deserve the wages of sin, which is death. But Lord, you offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that you love me and that God died on the cross for me, that Jesus Christ is God, and he died on the cross for me. You paid the death penalty for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, and I accept that free gift, Lord. Thank you so much that you have forgiven me, in your name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love you to send me an email and we'll rejoice together. Send me the email at friend 
at ChristAssembly.org. That's friend at ChristAssembly.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. Scripture quotations taken from the NASB, New American Standard Bible, copyright 1995 by the Lockman Foundation. Used by permission, all rights reserved.